And as you know, in the second part of my Zgrozy talk, and in the second part, I would like to explain uh, the details about the creative side of things at Zgrozy, and tell you what are the general principles by which we try to design our supplements, and what sensations are we trying to give our uh, players. An important point uh, uh, that always draw from all of Zgrozy co-creators to Lovecraftian fiction was how fresh it was. How stranger and more imaginative and or maybe just fresher uh, seemed all those strange entities, how purposefully difficult to grasp they were, how the creations of Lovecraft were really good at giving us a genuine feeling of the cosmic horror, of this feeling that there are things beyond our comprehension, that there are things which can be unsettling not because they want to uh, drink our blood and eat our souls, or rip us apart on a moonlight night, but simply because of how alien they are, that they are not just physically dangerous, but also, how to say, cognitively dangerous. Their very existence threatens our idea about, uh, about how the human world looks. And, as we all know, it's not so difficult to replicate this feeling using the classical Cthulhu monsters. Right now, in 2020, when um, most of the stuff Lovecraft wrote became more or less cliché. Like, if you allow me a personal, very personal memory, uh, the first, uh, the first uh, Christmas gift. I bought my ex-girlfriend was a plush Cthulhu mascot and of course those mascots are everywhere and I believe that Cthulhu mythos became kind of cozy by now and the new uh, creations that use the Cthulhu mythos can uh, either try to recreate this feeling of contact with the unknown which uh, Lovecraft's writing if when you read them first time, or can aim for something different, namely giving you the pleasant feeling of recognition, like, ha, it was Shogos after all, or ha ha, it was Cthulhu. And both feelings are great, and I really like uh, this subtle play around the common tropes. I like to uh, think it was Hastur, or it was Nyarlathotep, or it was Yogg-Sothoth, or things like this. And I've written uh, some Lovecraftian archive materials, which were based on this dynamic of recognition and maybe even prestige. But when I started, started writing Zgrozy, I decided that I want to be as earnest as can be when recreating the feeling of Lovecraftian cosmic horror, and I knew, as I think most of you do as well, that to do so, you have to be really, really very careful when applying elements from the Lovecraftian canon, precisely because this canon is so overused that it has lost a huge part of its emotion. entities, phenomena, which uh, are meant to uh, give a, uh, which are meant to give this feeling of the horror of the unknown, the incomprehensible, the inhuman, but uh, avoid the cliches that are so easy to invoke when you use the Lovecraftian canon too much. Before I start, I would like to make a short digression. 
Uh, if what I'm saying sounds interesting to you, you should uh, grab a copy of a little funny or a design, maybe funny isn't the best word, story game of called Lovecraftesque by George Fox and Nicky Anison. Lovecraftesque aims to recreate the feel of the original Lovecraft's writings, and it has great uh, essays on what this feel is and how to recreate it on table. Part of Lovecraft Desk's ideas would be difficult to transplant directly to Call of Cthulhu session because Call of Cthulhu, like most role-playing games, assumes active protagonists, investigators who want to solve the mystery, while, while Lovecraft Desk gets away with the main hero being a passive witness. Well, not necessarily passive, but a witness that can be passive and it won't destroy the story. Uh, but many arguments for why people Lovecraft fresh from Lovecraft desk are very easily transplantable to other Lovecraftian games, and I highly, highly recommend it to any of you who want to keep their cosmic horror really horrifying. Is grow the creator works with a set of common assumptions and this common template I presented in the last book. But it's not that we're clones, uh, we only wear similar coats uh, and we have different approaches to how to keep Lovecraft fresh. And uh, the tools grow the creators, which have been published in English so far, so me, Marek Golonka, and Michał Gralak, we for a bit in our approach, in that uh, I, uh, if I was running Zgrozy myself, I might well call this series The People of Cthulhu, because I want to keep the craft fresh by focusing on how the cosmic horror, on how encounters with the cosmic horror thank people, and uh, the general structure of my scenarios is that people are reacting uh, in a dystopian ways because they discover that reality as such is overwhelming. and love that his creations are Grolag mythos, because Michał is really an avid monster maker. Uh, yeah, Aaron, I'm afraid it's your end, because the rest seems to be hearing everything just fine, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so Michał has always been a very, very passionate monster maker, and he was crafting his own mythologies and uh, illustrating them with his really, really good artwork years before. Uh, years before Grozy started. Oh, 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 oh. It seems we are losing some quality. All right, Timer is the one recording this panel, so I hope you will be at least able to uh, see it clearly after uh, and for now let's continue if it will keep getting worse i will try to fix it by bringing another router um, so i am a bit on the reinterpret the mythos uh, side and michael is a bit more on the create new monsters side uh, but both approaches are valid and we are using both to quite a good effect in uh, in Zgrozy. When trying to explain what do we do, I always try to analyze what's so special about the Lovecraftian horror, and what will I, will I tell now is only my personal framework, which I use to invent uh, new Zgrozy phenomena and ideas. It's not canon in any way, I 
I, I kind of compiled it from a few articles and research papers on Lovecraft, but it's just a handy frame of reference and not anything to hold on to the uh, But when thinking about how to make something Lovecraftian, oh, before, uh, here you can also see the rest of the team. So Jacek, our prime historian, who writes this gross, uh, most closely re related to actual historical events, and Patrick, uh, the illustrator I told you about the, during the last talk, who prefers to appear as an interdimensional portal because why shouldn't he? And I hope to tell you more about both of those guys some other time. I hope to show you some of Jacek's as gross as soon as possible. As of now, let's move to how I and Michal are trying to uh, make Lovecraft fresh in our grossy creations. Mm. Uh, when uh, trying to uh, save set, I've written or scheduled or how to call it, I've arranged my ideas about how to keep Lovecraft fresh into a few very simple categories. So each of them tries to answer the question why are Lovecraft's creations so scary and how to replicate them. Of course, the term Great Old Ones is very, very, very hackneyed by now and overused and maybe even a bit trivial. But uh, when thinking how to make something Lovecraftian, I am often uh, trying to make this something great and or old. So to uh, give the threads of scenario a scope that clearly transcends the human dimensions of either time or space, to make the uh, beings enormous or ancient or just out of the human scale in some ways. And uh, I try to uh, create situations, phenomena, spells, beings that give the uh, investigators feeling of smallness while also being able to influence the action in some ways. Uh, I very like the title Cosmic Horror. I think it captures the feeling of Lovecraft's writings very, very well. And part of this Cosmic Horror Things already from the fact that investigators are so small and fragile against the odds that they face. But cosmic horror, cosmic, also because uh, it shows that the human reality is only a very, very tiny bit of the uh, overall reality that the protagonists of cosmic horror are discovering. So. I also try to invoke the feeling of cosmic horror by suggesting the existence of places, dimensions, modes of perception that are totally inhuman and yet are somehow uh, truer than the human uh, perspective. Uh, I don't want to spoil the Call of Cthulhu video game too much, and I don't think it's a very good game. That's, but there's one uh, moment in it which has really, really captured my fancy, and till today I think it's a very, very it's one of the best like interpretations of the Cthulhu mythos I've seen. The protagonist meets two versions of himself: one is a cultist, the other is an investigator, and the investigator is called Reality while the cult is, is called truth. So it really struck me that it's a great metaphor for the Cthulhu mythos to suggest that uh, the investigators just slip out of reality, or at least reality as they know them, they know it, confront the real truth, and probably became pawns, agents, or parts of this truth, because they can, um, because they their human nature and their human, human connections are part of this reality, but not of truth. And finally, um, I like to 
play with the idea that in Kalumitos, the uh, border between an entity, a creature, and a phenomena is very, very blurred. As you see, I am using various famous cover covers of Call of Cthulhu supplements uh, for this uh, presentation. And uh, I really adore the idea that Narratotep is appearing via, via various masks, which can be both creatures and objects and even very abstract ideas like a mathematical uh, equation. And I like the idea that mythos tombs maybe have a life of, the, of their own and that uh, Lovecraftian horror, everything, every phenomenon, every object can kind of alive and have some sort of strange alien agency. But at the same time, the entities are so uh, remote for our concept of normal life that the whole scale of uh, human, creature, being, entity, phenomenon, extremely blurred. Uh, and I think most of things we do at Grozzi could be uh, uh, could be perceived as a mix of these three uh, factors. So using the great old oneness, if you permit, of uh, Cthulhu mythos to portray the investigator smallness, using the cosmic dimension of cosmic horror to uh, show how fragile and how shallow their existence, that they're like the, what, what they perceive as their, as their world is, and using this blurred uh, boundary between uh, entity and phenomenon to create antagonists and obstacles which have agency but aren't villains in the typical sense. And how do we do it precisely? Let me show you a few examples from those girls which are, that are already released in English. Uh, I will uh, post a photo of the author uh, at, at each slide. I think you will recognize uh, which is me and which is Michal. Then if you don't remember this slide with our pictures, one of them looks like me and the other doesn't, and the other is Michal. And we will start with one of Michal's work, in the Conan Servant. Conan Servant is a description of a new great old one the lord of the of the foreign throne but you won't see his stats or their stats or its stats in the stuff element because Michal writes about the great old ones he conceives more as if they were diseases than beings he lists various ways in which they infect the human existence sometimes literally causing some mutations alternations and changes in human bodies, sometimes more metaphorically or spiritually. And uh, this Thorn and Servant supplement allows you to run an entire scenario or even campaign centered around the Lord of the Thorn Throne, but he is great and remote, he is a threat that's almost impersonal, he can be the scenario suggested in this supplement portrays uh, an anti villain of sorts who tries to combat his influence via medical means, and the players may discover some less unethical way to combat the for non influence, but they will they won't feel like a fight against a monster or a human, it will feel more like a fight against a force of nature. And that's precisely the effect that uh, will bring a session based on the foreman servant into the territory of how do we want to explore cosmic horror. Mm. On the other hand, my first grossy release, Shepherd of Moths, portrays the knowledge of the Cthulhu mythos a bit as if it was a drug. A drug. Uh, I always felt that um, 
Most clue what he reality. Threats mostly how dangerous the mythical knowledge is, and the investigator and the investigators who learn it do it uh, do it in this vein of fighting fire with fire. Uh, and by the way, I am using the Spanish cover here because uh, the Shepherd is the only uh, Zgroza which was released in Spanish, uh, and I still can hardly believe it happened. Enrique Camino contacted me and asked if he could do the translation, and it was so unexpected and hard and heartwarming for me that to this day it remains one of my fondest memories of this whole Zgroza adventure. And the part of Mox is centered again around an entity slash phenomenon which allows people to gain great, great knowledge of the truth about the Lovecraftian universe. But the shepherd is a bit haphazard in whom does he grant this knowledge, and uh, people might get hurt by his or its mission to enlighten the human race. And the players are confronted both with the dilemma if they should, uh, if it will be better, if they uh, they grab, if they seize this knowledge, or if they should avoid it, and also it comes out making other probably unprepared uh, people avoid it, and require some sacrifice, and it will be all and it will be always a lesser evil. So uh, overall, the number of mobs. A, mor a moral dilemma story, uh, where the dilemma is centered around if we should explore the mythic lore or not. And I also find this approach uh, very interesting, and I always have great joy running the shepherd and hearing all the others run it, because I think it's the most, among all the crazy scenarios, this one is the most, most, is the one most run most often. Um, and here, I try to invoke the feeling of cosmic horror by showing realities far, far beneath our human perceptions, but also twisting the normal mood and normal assumptions of Kraftian tale by think if uh, consciously uh, grasping for this knowledge might actually be a good thing sometimes. Uh, another example, World of Necronomicon, is in the scenario. It's a setting guide slash campaign seek, and it's wholly concerned with the third of my third point of my analysis, namely um, how the uh, border between an entity and a phenomenon becomes blurred in uh, in cosmic horror. And the World of Necronomicon suggests a view of the Cthulhu mythos in which Necronomicon becomes a bit of, a, of an antagonist and a bit of a tempter uh, because it contains various ideas for investigator, te investigator teams in which the investigators know bits of content from the Necronomicon from the start and it's, they, in, and it's their gateway drugs into gateway drug to the realm of the Cthulhu mythos and also, the um, book suggests that in such a campaign, the Chronomicon might have some sort of agency. And that by letting investigators read it and learn it, it might well be manipulating them in some ways. Then comes Vernissage, uh, Michal's first uh, the Grozzy scenario. And uh, Vernissage blurs the line between man and entity and entity and phenomenon in a few ways. It also invokes the tropes of the brightness and oldness of mythical creatures. Because in the Vernissage, the investigators are tasked with uh, investigating. Uh, vernissage of 
three sculptures, which represent various aspects of a strange new mythical entity, which might be Hastur, or might not, or might be something utterly different. And uh, this entity is represented by three uh, three sculptures, one of which you see on the slide, but also this uh, the ritual requires a specific behavior from three people that kind of represent uh, the three aspects and how exactly are they bound with it is every person who uh, shows some personality traits bound with this being that way or not there are all questions which the vernissage partially answers partially leaves it open for the paper it's also one of our first um, scenarios and uh, in the beginning of the process we probably weren't fully aware how strongly the Kakulu community is uh, is focused on one shot so back then we tried harder to make you an experience which can be easily woven into any campaign so we left more uh, unclear points so that you can uh, insert your campaign there Uh, and Vernissage is a very interesting scenario in which the investigators are constantly facing various manifestations of some great old entity, but they will, it will be very hard for them to recognize where this entity starts and where it ends. The only sure thing would be that it's somehow uh, omnipresent and clearly very, very dangerous. And the final example, I would like to tell you a few words about an inner call. Uh, uh, so, the scenario we released in English this September. The inner call is, most simply speaking, all of Cthulhu, if Cthulhu was a metaphor, metaphor if not an actual entity. Um, again, that is mostly to this trope of very unclear distinction between a person and an entity, maybe something else altogether. I don't want to split much, but um, the general premise is showing a small part of the world that gets twisted and corrupted and warped by becoming, so to say, although this word doesn't appear in the supplement because it's so silly, a Cthulhu fight and uh, try to present Cthulhu more as a process of Cthulhuification, which can happen to various people and things, and not exactly as an actual physical entity that sleeps somewhere in the central city of Riley, of Riley, or Riley, or Riley, or however you wish to pronounce it. Uh, but overall, uh, in Zgrodzy, we try to keep Cthulhu and uh, the Lovecraftian canon fresh in two ways. Either expanding on it, creating new phenomena, new creatures, new entities, or presenting those you already know in some new, typical way. Uh, how about combining this approach? Like, the Chapel of Moths is an entirely new entity, but uh, the scenario contains suggestions that it might somehow be connected to the classical entities or maybe even um, be simply an aspect of one of them. Uh, and the, the effect we strive for is cosmic horror. This feeling that the world is much, much bigger and stranger than the investigators usually assume. It doesn't need to be uh, win them harm, doesn't need to be an antagonist who wants to destroy them. It's just too strange, too weird, too uncanny to be fully grasped by humans. And uh, the main the antagonist figures 
villain but antagonists in our stories are usually not the creature themselves, but humans who try to do something about it and maybe decide that the end specifies the means or maybe get somehow broken or twisted. And in a way, it makes our horrors very cosmic and very human at the same time. And I believe it's a great mix because it gives the players both relatable antagonists and this overall feeling of something greater, something strange, something utterly, utterly inhuman. It seems to work, uh, both during our own playtests and during the sessions I heard about. People seem to be having great fun with these scenarios and uh, Mm, the reviews suggest that the reviewers like how they refer to the Cthulhu canon. And I'm very, very glad to be able to be making them. And I don't plan to stop anytime soon because it's just such fun and such an adventure. And that's all when it comes to how the girls reinvent the mythos. Thank you very, very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, like always, Please write them down in the text, the text chat. No, I must say Delta Green is one of those things I haven't been I didn't have time to familiarize myself with yet. I have like a huge, huge uh, list of couple of things I should research sooner or later, but uh, Delta Green wasn't been there yet. Uh, I think I've got this approach uh, first from the thing that I discovered Lovecraft's writing before I discovered how to do RPG, second from Lovecraft Desk, third from uh, suggestions on refreshing Lovecraft mythos in Trail of Cthulhu, and fourth from, from Bloodborne, so this video game from five years back, which combines gothic horror and cosmic horror very interestingly. It also doesn't use the canonical Lovecraft and creatures, but tries to invoke the canonical feeling with new creatures. Thank you very much for this. Uh, but thank you very, very much for this clue. I will investigate it as soon as I can. Uh, one, uh, one last question. I've prepared two talks about Zgrozy for this convention, but uh, I would gladly tell you any, I would gladly tell you more if you want to know more. So please tell me if there is something about Zgrozy you haven't learned from my talks and would like to. And if there is anything like this, I will organize a, sh I will organize a short separate event uh, during which I will, I will give a few talks explaining those stuff. So, is there anything else you want to know about Grozy? Thank you very, very much, Aaron. Then I think we can end the recording. Thank you all very, very much. It was great to have you here. See you next time. Bye bye.